<laughs> okay, we're going to start. So thanks everyone for attending. Um, I want to make uh, an announcement right up front that we're going to go 90 minutes. Art stop at 90 minutes, 11.30. Uh, I think Jeff and John from the health department will be here a few minutes after, so if you want to talk to them individually afterwards, is that okay, Jeff? Sure. Yeah. Uh, so I want to introduce Jeff. Well, Jeff Hedges and John Walper, right, from the Whatcom County Health Department. <laughs> Jeff is the director of the Solid Witness Program. And uh, I asked Jeff uh, before we start doing QA here, question and answer period, for Jeff to do just a brief recap of the two years that we've been talking and, and working on this, and then also what the upcoming, if this moves forward, what the upcoming public process is to. Uh, to push this through. So uh, I'm not going to moderate. I would just ask everybody to just be respectful to your fellow audience members. Don't monopolize your time. You can ask multiple questions throughout the, the meeting, but please, no monologues. Let other people give them time to speak. So that was how you do It's all yours. Okay, thank you. Uh, good morning. Boy, it's 9 o'clock on Saturday. Uh, I, want, I would like to say we've been meeting with uh, your community for two years now, and it's been like this every meeting. And I would like to say that your engagement as a community is better than anything I've done in 14 years at the health department. So kudos for everybody for being this engaged in your local community. Um, so Joel asked that I do a little summary of the last two years of the work on this project and why we're up here and that kind of thing. And I know that you know garbage is a pretty controversial issue, and it really should be because it's protection of human health and the environment. You know, it's about resource management. It's something that costs money. In our consumer society, there are so many different byproducts of consumption that it's highly complicated. And in Point Roberts, beautiful, diverse place that it is, you know, we have extra challenges like low density, remoteness, seasonal occupancy. You know, these are, these are real uh, bona fide challenges to the community. So, uh, so the background is that two years ago, uh, we had to put together the Whatcom County Comprehensive Solid Waste Management Plan. It's a legal requirement by the state that we do that every five years. And in that document, you know, we put as a recommendation, it's time to get up to Point Roberts and ask people how it's going regarding garbage. And the actual technical language in the plan was to go to Point Roberts and, you know, do, engage the community and, uh, you know, in, in engage in education and outreach, uh, you know, activities and look at the regulations and look how the private service was working. And anyway, we boiled all that down and we came up to your advisory committee meeting in May of 2016 and said, how's it going? Do you need anything from us? And, um, and they said, well, why are you here? And I explained the planning process, but I took it a little further then, right? And I said, in all honesty, the reason I'm here is that the health department just took over the solid waste division from the public works department. Right, and we're doing our planning document. And when I took over all the records, I read the 2010 document from the Washington Utilities and Transportation Commission, who regulates right uh, the services up here. And in that document, and this is when we lost, you know, point recycling went out of business in 2010. And the UTC lawyers and accountants and commissioners rendered their opinion of right why that happened, right? And so in that language at that time, they also very strongly said that Whatcom County needs to take a look at why that happened, and if they have to make changes, don't let it happen again. And hey Jeff, sorry to interrupt. So. Because we're standing room only and there's people out here, people are having problems hearing. So, thank you. Let's 
right? Yeah. There's some seats here for select people. <laughs> okay, thank you. Can people hear me? Is that better? Everybody, can you hear me? Thank you. Okay. Um, so when we came up in May of 2016, we discussed that with your advisory committee, and at all of the meetings we've had since that time, you know, we've always had 20 or 30 people, I think. And at that time, the advisory committee said, good question. And at that time, it was decided that what we would like to do is a community survey. So uh, we uh, did an online community survey, advertised it as best as we could, and we had 314 people actually spend a lot of time answering a lot of questions and then giving just a lot of opinions about how things were going. And we kind of boiled it down to five issues to look at. Levels of service, cost of service, concern about illegal dumping, recycling, okay, and you know, vendor stability. Those were the five things that we wanted to talk about regarding curbside services, transfer stations, and your commercial service, okay? And so that was great. 314 responses in a small community was really good in engagement and response. You talk to anyone that does, you know, surveys, and that was really good. So uh, those are online for anybody to see right now, and we used those for two years at our meetings as input when we discussed a variety of issues, okay? So uh, that was how it started, and since May of 2016 then, you know, it, it, I think 14 com uh, community advisory committee meetings, you know, we went kind of in depth about all of these things, and so, <coughs> So they got to the point where recommendations then uh, were made by the committee uh, that staff refined. And then the committee asked that we hold a town hall meeting and that we do a mailer to all the property owners that might be affected. Okay. Um, so for two years we've kind of done our best to work with you guys. And as far as next steps go, which I think someone at uh, Joel said to mention, as far as next steps go, you know, this whole two years, um, you know, we don't, the county doesn't do this all the time with all the issues they have. So this was all kind of above and beyond, but we can't imagine not having done it. But at this point, it will be time then to, for the county council to consider those recommendations. Okay, so that's what's going to happen kind of is the next step at this point. And um, that'll, that's probably six to eight weeks away still. And they'll advertise it. It'll be a public hearing, a normal county procedure. Um, so what we heard about today is um, the committee wanted to make sure that anyone that for two years hadn't been following the All Point Bulletin coverage or hadn't been coming to the meetings or hadn't been reading the minutes of the meetings still knew about the issue, right? That's why the mailer, that's why the town hall meeting today. So today, I'm going to, again, try and answer anybody's questions about uh, the recommendations. First question, uh, you say that you'd let everybody know that the notice to all the 2,300 should have gone out a year ago. In the letter that just went out from PRAC, uh, the advisory committee here, it didn't. it wasn't clear that there was a town hall meeting, and then they have failed since to put out more notice, no sandwich board, it didn't go across point interface, it was barely even in the newspaper, so I'm not clear on how you say the word. Thank you, Ken. I'm happy to address that question, and what I'd like to say is that I respect everybody's opinion here on issues like announcing meetings and how meetings get announced, how much ahead of time, that kind of thing. Kind of a local issue, kind of an advisory committee issue, okay? answer the question for everyone to have their own opinion okay after this two years at the advisory committee meeting on March 13th the committee asked staff because they wanted to do the best they could to do a mailing to everybody with a frequently asked question document and so what happened we said sure and then at that same meeting, they said, and we'd like to schedule a town hall meeting. Will you come? We said, sure. The advisory committee at the meeting looked at calendars and picked April 14th. 
We said, sure. And then we went as fast as we could to develop and write and mail out at a cost of $5,100, not to the community, uh, the FAQ and a letter from the chair of the advisory committee. We, got, we did that all, it hit the mail in nine business days. We were pretty proud of that. And in that mailer, in the cover letter on the first page at the bottom, it said we will have a town hall meeting. And then in the three page frequently asked question document under what are the next steps, it said a town hall meeting will be held at 10 a.m. on April 14th. We mailed that first class to 2,300 property owners First class to Canadian citizens and addresses, bulk mailing to Point Roberts. And from a timing standpoint, only one of those letters was returned to me because of a wrong address. And it, I received it on April 10th. And that means it went up into Canada and back, in, back to me by April 10th. So that tells me that the people in Canada got it a week and a half ahead of time. And that was the best we could do. No, oh, I apologize. But so, thank you. What I would like to say, though, I mean, a couple of things, and I appreciate that there's some feelings on this. Okay. Number one, number one, the county right never spends money on mailers like this and does this kind of thing. Number two, it was the local community that asked for us to do it in that time frame, and really to do that in only nine business days was pretty quick. Okay, and I think your advisory committee is being very diligent in asking us to do that. If you feel like it was short notice, I apologize for that. I'm sorry? So, I got my notice on Wednesday, mm -hmm. and I've been emailing you. Um, I, I think that the Fred Roberts Advisory Committee is doing the right thing by giving people a chance to come to a meeting like this. And, but they're an unelected committee, so, and they don't have a paid administrator. So how do they know that they should have decided on a meeting six weeks out instead of four weeks out in order to give Canadians enough time? That's the kind of thing that I think that as county staff, you could have gone back to them and made a recommendation that the meeting needed to be a little bit further out so people had time to respond to the information. So I don't, I don't hold a volunteer committee responsible to understand mail timelines and formal meeting notice, but they do hold county officials to the ability to give them information to guide them in their process. Just like you would with an HOA, you have a paid administrator who guides you in the process of following the laws and making sure you give proper notice. I think that's really important in this process. The um, advisory committee made a very good decision to have this meeting, but they, need, they do need guidance to make sure that they give enough notice. And it's not on them, that's on paid people who can tell them, hey, it, should, it actually takes longer to get to Canada. Okay, thank you. Point, point, duly noted. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. She was first. Okay. My question is, why weren't we notified about the survey originally? How were we oh. supposed to know there was a survey? Okay. Were these oh, thank you. So in May, in May, thank you. Good question. In May of 2016, when the committee asked us to do the survey, there was discussion about how the survey should be conducted. And they said that they wanted it online. They said it should be advertised on the community list serve. You know, we, we thought that maybe what is, what is that? we put it on the point interface and we put it in the all points bulletin electronic and paper. It was advertised in all point bulletin and electronically on your list serve, which is I don't know what that is. The I'm sorry, Joel, would you please explain the list we, serve? We put it in the point interface I think twice. It was in the Which paper old? edition of uh, APB and I think it was in at least one EPB. Yeah. Joel, people don't know what the list serve. Is. Well, then they should, they should find out, because if they have a... No, but Joel, 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 Joel,
when it was decided to do this. <coughs> the survey was advertised in the hard copy of the All Point Bulletin, once or twice online All Point Bulletin, and on the community internet list serve that we were informed was what most people are registered on. But if, if you're only here seasonally, most people are here in May. You know, and, they don't, they don't and I appreciate the challenges of, of a seasonal resident uh, being engaged in the community and staying up on the news, but, but the best efforts were made. But this, you know, this, this week was mailed, though. Why couldn't it have been mailed originally? That's what I was getting. Oh, why could what not have been mailed? Why couldn't you mail? Oh, because, okay, very good, thank you, very good question. Because, you know, it cost the county $5,100 just to do this last mailing. And so there is no legal requirement and there is no funds to, for every community on every issue, do mailings to everybody on everything. But it wasn't even mailed out of the garbage bill. I'm sorry? It wasn't even mailed out of the garbage bill. Mm -hmm. No, it was not. It was not decided to do that. So thank you. I've provided information on this question. We have another question. Um, I might be going against the grain of the meeting, but I'm a Canadian. I have a place down at Point Roberts here on Benson Road. We've had it since 1992, and I, I'm hearing some complaints about the process of how this is all coming, but I believe in paying for the services that we need. I don't think there's any place in Canada that I know of that the garbage collection is not part of your tax bill, the water provision is not part of the tax bill. Down here, we already pay for services we don't use. As a seasonal resident, I get billed for water year-round. Well, that's just the way it is. As a seasonal mm -hmm. resident, I would very happily pay for garbage collection, even if I don't use it all the time. Uh, there may be some issues as to the level of the service. Maybe we don't need a Cadillac down here. Maybe we only need a Volkswagen. And I appreciate all that. But the nub of it is not, well, really how you're doing it or how it's coming about. The real nub of it is it. What do we want in the end? Maybe you didn't give enough notice. Maybe you gave enough notice. I don't really know. I know we did the survey when it went out. Uh, my wife is a little more uh, adept at the email stuff, and so she did the, did the survey, and we did see it, and, and we do get the, the, old, or the old points bulletin, and we saw it in print. But I just want to say I'm for some kind of increased garbage collection because that's the only way it can be viable. We can't keep doing what we're doing now and continue to have it viable. So I just want to say, as a Canadian, I'm willing to pay for that service. Thank you. Um, if I may comment on that, I appreciate it. Just for information purposes, um, in this two-year process, one thing that the Community Advisory Committee did say was that we have 75% seasonal residents, how are they doing it in Vancouver? What are they used to, right? What, and so we actually researched what they're doing and brought that back to the committee and there were discussions about that and a lot of those elements are incorporated into this so that it works for everybody. <coughs> um, thank you, I'm gonna go to some, I'll get back to you. Um, yes, well, Scott, my property taxes right now are about $800 a year. Your $200 a year increase in garbage, that's a 20% increase in my garbage, mm -hmm. my taxes for this year. And uh, I don't know if that's allowed to increase taxes by 20%, but one year it shouldn't be. And you say that in your sheet here that out of 2,300 properties, only 300 use good curbside collection. Am I speaking loud enough? It, anyway, collection. If that's not a referendum on curbside pickup, I don't know what is. Yeah. I mean, all those people had the option of having it all the way along, but they don't want it, neither do I. In one year, I bet you I don't spend $19 a year dumping garbage, and I've been dumping here for 23 years. Are you seasonal? I can go on, but I'll let somebody else talk, and I'll come back. Yes, yes. Okay. Let me, uh, let me yeah. you know, what I'll try and do is answer questions. My job here today is to provide information, okay? So you brought, you raised the tax issue and the cost, which I appreciate, but we all, okay? $20 a year, no. and, and I appreciate the increases in the other parts of the, the tax bill for things like education that I'm paying for, too. I understand that. Um, but you asked about how this works on the tax bill, I think. So a couple of pieces of information. Uh, number one, it is not a tax, and it is not based on valuation. Technically, okay, if you're the county treasurer, this is a 
fee that is paid for on your tax bill. The county gets not one dollar of that fee on your tax bill, okay? So what's happening here, right, is instead of cutting a check every month for 17 bucks or whatever the Washington Utilities and Transportation Commission decides, could be 16, um, times 12, you know, comes out around 200 bucks. That, you're paying for the service on your tax bill. And so agree with it or not, that is the mechanism. And then what happens is, if you want more frequent pickup, bigger cans, drive-in carry-out, tags, extra cans, any of the other services that you may want, that can do, as approved on their tariff by the UTC, you can call them up and say, I want that, and they invoice you directly. Okay? If you're a seasonal, I'm sorry, uh, I was trying to finish your answer to the question. You know, for example, you know, if you're seasonal and you say, well, I'm not here to set my garbage out of, and my cans will be left in the street because I can't go get them. You know, right now, the um, existing tariff, right, for, for you know, carry out is that, you know, for a dollar, the driver, for every 25 feet, round trip, walk up to your house, get that 32 gallon can, and those three bins of source separated recyclables, carry them back to the truck, unload them, and carry your cans back up to your house. Um, if, you're 50, if you're 50 feet away, it would cost $2 for that, times two for a month. So if you're a small cottage, 25 foot to the street, right, what will happen is, if you're paying 16 or 17 bucks a month or something, whatever UTC approves for the service of the minimum level, and then you pay an extra two bucks a month for them to go up there and get it, in the discussions, all that's left for you to do is buy a raccoon-proof garbage can, and you don't have to smuggle garbage across the border and risk the customs <laughs> issue, <laughs> which is the real inequity. And I love that you guys are laughing about that. Okay, and I'm married at Kitsilano Gal. It's my home away from home up in Vancouver, okay? And, you know, the transfer station is open until noon on Sunday. I'd be smuggling it, too, because it's not open when I go back home, okay? Um, but there's no money for more open hours at the transfer station, so how do you have that higher level of service? Um, so, anyway, well, all I want to say is that we look into the Canadian. I'm going to get him first, and then you. Thank you. I think the problem is, as seasonal people, those garbage cans are going to be empty. Exactly. The garbage truck is going to go by, they're not going to be providing us a service. Except for peak system. Except for peak season. Except, except for half the year when people are here. Right, half a quarter of the year. Right. A third of the year. Or the people you're renting to. No, no. You don't see too many people down here being there. And we appreciate that, yeah. Anyway, so who paid the fee for yep. the tax? I agree. Yep. It's a fee for no service being provided. Yes. May I, okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. May I respond to this question? Because I think there's a question there. Okay, right? Uh, when. The Canadians in the community at the committee meeting they asked us to, you know, look into the Canadian system and to bring it back. In Delta, Vancouver, what we are recommending is what they are using, and it's called a flat fee slash user pay discrete hybrid system, where you you have a minimum level of service, right, that you must participate in that you pay for on your tax bill. Same thing. How is that fee monthly or yearly inside? Oh, thank you. How many people are going to get picked up? That would determine how much. Exactly. Uh, how much it costs? Employees can and needs to have. Then, may I please answer that question? Yeah. This is, and we will come this way. Um, this is an important question here. Okay. And so, what I'd like for people to know because it relates to a lot of the questions, is that the regulatory authority for that question is the Washington Utilities and Transportation Commission. That's how we do it in Washington State. Um, you know, they are lawyers and commissioners and accountants that are, uh, that are an agency. They regulate about 54 of the can-dos all across Washington State. All of the people that do what can-do, right, are regulated by the UTC. So what does the UTC do? The UTC views a company like CanDo and all the other haulers as a 
owner invested utility. Okay? What that means is it's not a public utility like you might be used to for other services. It's a privately owned company that's regulated as a utility. And the way that works is that as a private company, you are given a territory that does not have competition in exchange for being highly regulated. You cannot earn more than the net return that they say you can earn. You have to do financial reporting every year. Show them all of your expenses and all of your revenues and all of your profits. Right? They are the ones that say what the monthly fee will be for each of these services. Okay? And you know, these guys are really good at what they do. There's no money grab, there's no excess profit on the one side, but on the other side, they don't want companies to go out of business. Because we're a privatized, our county, the county doesn't do in Whatcom County, you don't have transfer stations, landfills, or trucks. All of it is handled by private companies. That's the way we are in Whatcom County. So we don't, like in 2010, when the last guy went out of business, we don't want the new guy to go out of business, right? Can you, so just to explain what he's asking you, if there's seven times as many people going to be a yes. customer, yes. how much more garbage do you actually expect them to pick up? Because the revenue currently looks mm -hmm. like it's about 60000 from home pickup, mm -hmm. which is not a lot of money. The new revenue looks like an additional 400000 mm -hmm. which Hey, if you picked up three hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of garbage and paid staff, perfect. Mm -hmm. Is has the hauler done modeling to let us know how much actual mm -hmm. extra garbage you're going to be picking up if you're charging oh, thank you. an answer, extra two thousand people? I will answer that question and get to the two here that are waiting. Thank you, because that's still your question there. Okay, so at a lower altitude, a lower low, uh, lower altitude degree of uh, detail. Okay. What the UTC will do, it's complicated, because if you're picking it up curbside, you get less at the transfer station. If people aren't smuggling it across the border, you're going to get more. That increases your economy of scale. If people aren't putting it in the dumpster at the garbage at the gas station, right, that's that's more garbage. So what the what the UTC does is they have the knowledge and the experience and their accountants and their lawyers and their commissioners are appointed by the, the governor, right? Um, when they approve a franchise. They're going to spend a lot of time estimating all of the revenues and all of the expenses, all of the times, and, so and everything. I don't do that. So, so here's how it works. The Washington Utility, if, you know, if and when the county council approves these changes, what will happen is can do will have to renew their tariff at the UTC. The UTC will then put them through a two to three month scrutiny where they will make sure the costs, right, are as low as possible and appropriate. And I talked with them yesterday. And you know, I'm, I know Dave is here. Um, I met, I just threw out an estimate of seventeen dollars per month for the minimum level of service. And the guy said, well, it might be less than that, you know. And I, that's not my duty to determine that, right? Uh, they're the deciders on that. And then what they will do, 12 months later, after the approval of the tariff and the new services, right, they will review to make sure that CanDo is not making more or less than that fixed rate of return that they are held to. And they're going to look at more details. You know, I had calls from people on Bayview saying, if i got to pay for the garbage, you can't turn around at the end of my street, so I'm not going to be on the list, right? CanDo is going to, if this flies, for example, and I also have someone ask about private lanes that big trucks can't get down. Candy is going to purchase a six-yard compactor truck that's the size of a pickup truck that can get in all these places that the big truck can't. It costs money to invest in that to be able to provide that level of service. May I get to them and then you? Thank you. They were, I try to keep an order here. Sure. Go ahead. Jeff, thank you. Oh. you. You've been extremely clear. And I'm much, much wiser today as a result of all of your explanations. Mm, thank you. I've had a permit for uh, 49 years. Okay. As far as I know, it's still valid. I pay currently on a self haul basis for the six months when we're in use mm -hmm. in excess of $250. The majority mm -hmm. of that is grass. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. There's very little garbage older people create, you know, mm -hmm. in fact. And 
the, the problem here viewed is an equity on a seasonal basis. Mm -hmm. the, the service should be recognized that April through September or October is the peak period. And if they provide all of the services you've suggested, that'll be wonderful. Mm -hmm. Okay? The rate in the off-peak period should reflect the much lower reduction. The answer, the answer to that question, okay, that's a good question. And the answer to that question is that when the UTC calculates the monthly rate, what you'll find is that the price will be an average of those two. But the service won't. The service will be still available every other week. So, okay, let me answer the question. And this is where it gets interesting, okay? And you can get as complicated as you want with this, right? Okay? If you were going to charge, right, only in the peak season, right, you'd have to charge more than the proposed or expected monthly rate, okay? And then if you're going to charge, not charge in the off-peak season, so the two of those, you still have to have the same revenue to cover the costs. And when you're buying trucks and hiring people, excuse me, when you're buying trucks and hiring people, routing software, doing a good job with websites so people know what the services are, paying for insurance, paying for training, keep your scale registered, um, you know, all of the expenses that it takes to run this business. Paying for the garbage to be trucked to Portland, not by rail, but trucked, when it can't even go to the landfill right across the border. Why Portland? Can't, that's the best deal that can be. It's in Cowlitz County, just north of Portland. Not a bad deal. Excuse me, Ken. Excuse me, excuse me, Ken. If it was as easy as trucking the garbage to Ferndale and cheaper, it would be, I talked with Candu yesterday about this and I got the details on it. And I know you know how to manage garbage, but the reality is that, and David can talk about this if that's what we want to spend our time on, but it's, he's not as big as sanitary services or Nooksack Valley Disposal in Washington County. Sanitary services company has 45,000 curbside customers. They can negotiate lower rates, they can provide higher services. Up here, you guys have 300 and we're hoping to get it up to 2300 just so we have some economy of scale. Right? Um, so it's kind of, we talk about inequity of, for seasonality. My response to that is that currently, and I don't blame the seasonals, right? But a lot of garbage is being smuggled back across the border because it reduces our economy of scale to provide services when we can't even reduce our costs with the Canadian government by just going across the border, we have to truck it all the way down south. Who's smuggling garbage? Who's smuggling garbage? The answer to that question is in the survey, and again, um, you know, I find this interesting and humorous, and I'd be doing it my given all the circumstances, but in the survey and in the discussions, our seasonal residents, you know, were wonderfully candid about the fact that a lot of garbage is going uh, on Sundays back to Canada. Okay. okay, so and what I'd like to say, well, what I'd like to say is recyclables are legal to do that with some sandwich, but not garbage. And we got a lot of input. We got a lot of input and we talked to the border guys and they say it's happening too. A lot of garbage is going across the border. You know what's happening is because the dump isn't open, people yeah. come down to the beach. Yes, that's a great point. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Where's, the, where's the dump? Like, that's, that's exactly right. So what are they doing? They're touching them. See, there's, but, the, but there's, no, there's no money to keep the transportation open more of course. But what it was before is it was open almost every day. The last guy who went out of business. I'm sorry. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'm faithfully waiting, so I appreciate it. You actually put your hand up like the rest of us have been doing. Yes. I am a full time resident here. And I do own a house in Canada. And I do pay for my sewer, water, and garbage, whether I live in my house or not. So, what is the difference? Up 
garbage out of my forest so that my kids could play in it because everyone was dumping it. And yes, it does get taken through the border because I sit on a border committee and that is the number one complaint. That people are illegally, because you are not allowed to take garbage, you are allowed to take recycling. Mm -hmm. People are taking their garbage through to their home so they don't have to pay the garbage bill here. And yes, I know that the hours of the dump is horrendous. Mm -hmm. Yes, I do not want to spend my Saturday afternoon sitting in the garbage lineup for 40 minutes to dump my garbage. Sunday. Sunday, sorry. Sunday. Same thing on Thursdays, and during the summer, we're lucky, we get Tuesdays too. Yeah. It's not viable to have it open more hours <coughs> if we only have 300 customers. Do our neighbors burn our garbage? Yes, now our neighbors do, but I have a neighbor who burns their garbage, which is hugely illegal also. So I am in full favor of someone coming to my house, which I pay for my service every week, Mm -hmm. on a yearly basis, because we can do that. Mm -hmm. We have the capabilities to make our quality of life a little bit better around here, and that is what I am hoping will happen. Thank you. Uh, very good question, thank you. Uh, the question is, what, what is a resident here? And uh, what I, so regarding our recommendations, here's how that would work, okay? We differentiate between single family residential dwelling and multi-family residential dwelling, okay? So the way the current recommendations work is that if you have a tax parcel number and you know, a piece of property and you have a septic system, and you have at least, and, and if you have one to four residential units on it, okay, you will pay one minimum level of service. And what that means, okay, is that for that 16 or 17 or 18 bucks a month, you will have twice a month pickup with recyclables, okay? If you have, I'm sorry, if you have a duplex, a triplex, or a quad, you will still only pay for one level of service. And you can decide if both people in the duplex share that can, or if you want to share that can and then have additional pickup or bigger cans invoiced directly by can do. If you have uh, more than four units, you're defined as a multi-family dwelling, okay? And then you're not subject to that requirement. You don't pay the fee on the tax. All you can, you can decide if you want a dumpster or if you want cans with recycling and just work directly with can do. I bring that up because according to my dictionary, I do not reside in Point Roberts. I'm not allowed because I'm Canadian. Oh. Okay? Okay. So I'm not a resident. Mm -hmm. I have a lot up here mm -hmm. with a small shelter. I have no water, I have no electricity, I have no septic. Okay. But yet I get hit with those same fees that everybody That's my life. Let me answer. Thank you. I'm going to answer your question. The question of whether or not you are a resident is not relevant. But, 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 but let me finish. It's addressed to residents, isn't it? No, the, letter, the mailer went out to property owners. Not residents. Well, according to this question, you talk about residents. Okay, so let me just let me answer your question. But I don't have a residence. No, you don't have. You not reside here. So the, you will not be subject to the service requirement. You don't have a separate. Why do I get the letter? I'm the because you're a property owner. Oh wait, here's a good. Okay, I'm sorry. Order, please. This is a very good question because, and this is interesting. Did you say you do not have a septic system? No. If you do not have a septic system, you should not have been on our database list to receive that letter. Well, that's the very interesting part of it. Because as soon as we introduced that septic fee, I phoned. And the person on the other end of the phone told me, we're going to look into that. Uh -huh. And we will notify it. Okay. Of course, we never did. How long ago was that? Presently slapped the fee right on with my tax bill. Oh, the $19? Yes. How long ago was it you called us about that? 
Maar zoon als je weer in vorm niet dat hij kan niet meer zien voor de set. Ja. En dan zegt hij houdt, hij heeft geen water, geen elektriciteit, hij kan niet meer zien. Goed. So, so let me send me the bill. I'm John. So let me answer because that's absolutely not anything to do with solid waste. This has to do with on-site sewage, is what you're talking about. Of course. So, this is so all the, included in that. Right, but if we want to spend the time on this, I'm more than happy to address this within a couple of minutes if you guys would like me to do that. So you and I can be afterwards and talk about what's going on with your on-site sewage. But, you don't have. but here's, let me answer the comment. I'll be done. I'll be done. Sir, 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 sir. Order, order, please. I'm going to finish with this gentleman's question. And to answer, thank you, I'm sorry, if you do not have a septic system, it is a mistake that you were on that list of 2,300 properties and you will not be subject to the solid waste requirements that we're talking about. Right. Thank you. That's the answer to your question. For us, it's taxation without representation, right. and um, I would be willing to pay for some kind of garbage as long as it's prorated as one of the others said. So we use so little, and I have a garbage compact on my property. I'm not wealthy. My place was inherited from my parents. Taxes alone went up to over $200 this year. When you put it into Canadian funds, it's $260. You talk about putting $200 a year on for garbage, it's going to be another $260. And as I say, we love it, but I just don't come out. There's no sense in it because my voice is heard, but nothing is done. Yeah. Thank you. Right, let me address the uh, representation issue. Yes. Okay. At these, we had Canadian represent people coming to these meetings, and the chair of the advisory committee is Canadian. And there was lots of discussion about equitability and you know um, how to support the seasonal residents in these considerations. Okay, and many comments were thrown out there. And I'll, I will say that on my wife, my my in-laws inherited property in Point Roberts, and at Christmas, you know, they weren't exactly smiling at me because of my work on this project. Uh, but they listened. Uh, so I respect what you're saying about inheriting property and the taxes go up. At, at the same time, in these discussions from the Canadians, we were hearing things like, well, the folks that have seasonal vacation homes in the Gulf Islands know that they have to pay for services even when they're not there. That kind of thing. They're the ones that had us look at the Canadian system and incorporate it into the program here. So what's happening is that you know, you're getting garbage service, right, when you are here. You're getting garbage service if you have a renter. But you're also, for that amount of money, not getting your neighbors burning garbage next to you, not having garbage illegally dumped everywhere, and that kind of thing. So there are benefits to public health and the environment that are uh, in addition to the direct service of having your garbage disposed of. Uh, uh, go ahead. Just, you had mentioned about if if your property extends past the pavement and on the private driveway and a private lane, mm -hmm. for example, like Paul's Road. Okay. So if you have property where you're away from, yes. are you saying that they will go down the private road and pick it up? Oh, in the existing, or, in the tariff, thank you, there, in the, there are two uh, services in the existing tariff, right, uh, that you can have. One is carry out and one is drive in. Okay, right up to 100, and David can correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, up to 125 feet away from the road for $1 per 25 feet, the driver will go up and get it for you. If it's 125 feet to 250 feet, that's called a drive-in, and they will drive in and get it and, and charge you a, a reasonable fee for that. Um, and if it's a winding private road and whatnot, they'll put you on the list to use instead of the big truck, the small six yard compactor pickup truck to come get you. And there's no extra charge for having to use the small compactor pickup truck. Um, but I'm going to get this lady here who had this question. Yeah. Um, on the survey, there were like 314 people who applied. 
of that uh, uh, 43% were Canadians. And on question 19, there's only 117 people that commented. Of that 117, 10 people said to put it on our taxes. 10 people out of 223 residents mm -hmm. are suggesting we put on our taxes mm -hmm. for a fee. Mm -hmm. And in Whatcom, how can and in Whatcom County, how is the rest of Whatcom County paying? And yes, we're unique, but why should we be different? And mm -hmm. than the rest of Whatcom County, mm -hmm. I know we're here because of our geographics, but for paying, why? Why do they feel that they can change the rules just for us? Oh, thank you. Well, okay, I can answer. It's a very good question. Why? Why was there discussion and a recommendation? <coughs> to uh, charge for the services on the annual tax bill rather than mailing out an invoice every month or two or three. Okay, that's the question, right? Um, uh, first of all, uh, this proposal to use the mechanism of the tax bill to collect for the service is not against any rules, okay? Um, the way that that would work, right, is on the approved tariff, right, that includes Things like how do you bill and how often, right? And that there's a law around that. Well, what the UTC has said is that as an attachment to the tariff, they would like to see a written agreement between the county and can do as to how that would work. And then it's an application for a waiver from the requirement to bill every month or two or three. And you request that, you show them how you're going to bill instead, and then the commissioners rule on that. The lawyers and the accountants and the commissioners we have all the experience across the state with these things. Say yes or no. And the rest of Washington County pays one uh, Now, the reason, okay, this, that's the first part of the question about rules, okay? Um, so, very good question. Why aren't we just invoicing monthly like the rest of Washington County? Okay, why are we proposing to collect it on, right, the tax bill as a fee, right? Okay? So, it, he, I just heard it's cheaper. That's what it boils down to. Sanitary service company has 45,000 customers. Nooksack Valley Disposal has 6,500. They have economy of scale for the administrative overhead, not only to do envelopes and stamps and billing every month or two or three, right? Automated, uh, and, right? It's in their tariff. They collect extra money for that, right, as an expense. Um, you know, so they, they not only have that. We don't have that economy of scale here. Not only do we not have that economy of scale, if 75% of the people live in another country, all of a sudden that complicates it, right? And if the seasonals have a hard time keeping up with local stuff, right, they don't need another and bill going to them from another country. And guess what? That's what they're used to in Canada. And the last thing I'll say about that then is that for the people that forget to pay the bill or don't want to pay their bill, Right? All of a sudden, it's more administrative overhead right, to go through collections. And then, not only that, there's provision in state law and county ordinance that the county then gets involved and issues civil penalties if you're not paying the bill. Okay? So all of that administrative overhead in a small community with a small customer base right, is not necessary if you just collect it on the uh, I'm, uh, I'm sorry. I get, go ahead. Um, well, the other side of the coin we're not seem to be talking about is if we're going to have this mandated service, are we going to have the same type of service that these other places you have? I mean, you go to Maple Beach, South Beach, uh, all the pl public places around, there's no trash can. And I understand why there's no trash cans, because everyone goes and throws their trash in the public trash can. But it's a problem here, I mean, I walk on the beaches almost every day, and I don't mind picking up the odd trash here and there, but it'd be nice if I had a trash can to put it in at the end of my walk. And there's, but there's no public trash anywhere in Point Roberts. Mm -hmm. So is there a plan to uh, rid that problem so we keep the trash off our beaches? No, but that is something that we're happy to talk about with you guys. It's not happy to been a part of the discussion. You know, in Birch Bay, Right, it's an unincorporated area, but the county has a park. The county has, an, has a park on the beach. So I've got 22 cans there every summer, and pay SFC to come pick them up. Okay, that's because it's a 
public park. Up here, I think these are private property. No, no they're all public beach. Are they actually public beach? Yeah, yeah. all four corners of Point Roberts are public parks now, owned by Watson County. Fantastic. But uh, well, wait a minute, we have dumpsters at the... We have some sort of parks that the parks department is paying for. Yes. Yeah. So two, out of, two out of four parks. But what you're saying is they're not available to park. Two out of four. So now this is fantastic because yeah. this is the kind of... Okay, what I'd like to say is this is... Well, they need more of them. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to hear that and talk about it, but here's what's relevant to this conversation. You know, that would be part of the overall system. We're happy. Jeez. That probably would have been if everybody got their garbage picked up. They wouldn't have to throw it in the dumpster. Uh, so you put a can in without getting it filled up all the time. <laughs> That's one part of the equation. But what I'd like to say is thank you. Let's write that down. Well, talk about South it. Beach in the summer gets hundreds of day visitors that just come down. And when they go home, they leave their trash on the beach. Because there's no cans to put it in. But is it South Beach a public? This would solve that problem. Yeah, well, see, so that's the detail. No, it's solve that problem. Oh. But, but what I'd like to say is, oh, and we'll finish with this. Hey, it's a public problem. You know, you thank you. You raised a great point. And what I, what I would like to do is say that this is an excellent conversation point to have at the advisory committee meeting where we can talk about the details of where and how much and is it public versus private and that kind of thing. Happy to do that. Um, uh, Ken, you're getting tired. We're here because the company has supposedly lost money for the last two years. The, the financial, sh uh, I believe, our public record at the UTC when he has to file every year. Mm -hmm. right. right. Yeah. Yeah. So could he, uh, the company, provide those financials to put them on the, all of them on the website to so here's so how that people works. can uh, see why, how these losses have accrued. As as a private business owner, you try and build your business. I know this from doing my accounting at, at, at the end of the year. You buy more tools, you build your business up. You, you try not to have too much profit because you pay taxes on it. So how do we know that he actually had a loss? Part of his loss was a $1,000 fine from the UTC last year for not filing his paperwork on time. That was a $1,000 fine of the almost 10000 yes. he's claiming as a loss. Sure. So to, we need more information right. when, it, when he's trying to get a B on our tactic. Well, let me go ahead and answer your question. And I think there were a couple of them in there. Um, number one, for everyone to know, is that the way it works legally, right, is that every year, can do and all of the other companies that are regulating investor-owned utilities are required to submit to the UTC their complete financial records, unlike any other private company, right? Profit and loss, and where all the expenses went to, at a certain level of altitude, right? It's a, it's a long time <coughs> statement, okay? Um, and the way that it works, is, and I do this daily in my job at the health department, people request us records, they have to fill out a one-page form, right? There's laws that are on public records. It gets approved, and then it gets provided. The UTC operates the same way because it's a state law. So if you call, if you call up UTC, fill out their one-page public records request form, and say that you want to see financial records from CanDo for XXXX year, right? They will make them available to you for 15 cents a page. Um, right now online, in the, in the FAQ mailer that we did, right? What we went ahead and, and, and included as far as the online documents where it was the profit and loss statement for 2017 for can do that I happen to have because this question came up. Yeah, he lost $9,500 last year and he's a small businessman. Um, I, and what, I'm sorry, was there a... How many years has he been losing money? I haven't seen all of years of financial records. But this these year, meetings you've been stating two years he's been losing money. I, say, I stated... The, I stated that in 2017, he lost $9,500. UTC is the regulating authority. They have the records. They can ask. Okay? So, uh, regarding the issue of financial viability, which is the bigger question you're asking here, what I can say <coughs> is that in 2010, the UTC scathingly pointed out to the county that the existing exemption process was what was causing a lack of viability that they doubted that 
any service provider could make a dollar off and survive. And then in the records, I went back to 2001. They had a town hall meeting here in 2001. 60 people came, and in the meeting minute notes, it said there was consensus, no exemptions, so that they could have higher services at lower prices and the things we're talking about now. That didn't happen. A couple years later, we lost a service provider. We got a new guy. He's losing money. We don't want you guys to not have garbage service. So around the county, most of the service providers pay fifty dollars a month rent. Yes. How much does Camden pay? Thank you. How much? Seven. Uh, Seven hundred. We have we have two other facilities in Whatcom County, owned by Sanitary Services Company, both of them. They each pay fifty dollars monthly rent to the county to lease that facility. Can do is paying seven fifty. And why are we paying seven fifty? And my understanding of that is that in the lease agreement with the pro previous service provider, the previous service provider was required to pay for all improvements on the site. And in my, my memory is correct, he spent about one hundred forty thousand dollars improving the site. Right, but then when he went out of business, he filed a lawsuit with the county, right, uh, and then they settled, and the county agreed to give him one hundred and forty thousand dollars for those improvements, even though the lease said they were his to pay, just like with can do right now. That's what the lease well, says. That lease I'm sorry. So because that money has been carried over today, but so we are we shouldn't, but the county well, is forced it's to an improvement. In the business. Yes, but when the business goes out of when it goes out of business, I'm not footing the bill. So and that's what we're doing right now. Seven hundred dollars a month for the last eight let me, years. Let me, credit cards and then not pay your bill and expect that you're not gonna have that's to not the same. Uh, it is not the same. Okay, order, order. Thank you very much. I, I love the passion, but I'd like to give you information on the question. Okay? So I cannot speak, I'm not a lawyer, I cannot speak to what happened eight years ago in a settlement agreement around the lawsuit. Okay? But what I have said in this last two years of discussion, right, is that I am willing to go before our elected officials and discuss with them, right, changing that lease rate. Because, and here's why, okay, right now we're talking about curbside services. But when we're done with this, what we have talked about, and it's on our critical path analysis of doing, is next talking about transfer stations. We look at transfer station as a depreciating asset that needs capital investment. We want it to be something that works better for you that you're proud of. And what I would like to see, I agree with you, is that extra $700 a month going into your transfer station to improve it, right? Instead of being an expense to can do, but that would be owned by Gladly as his improvements when it's a fee taxed on. So, okay, so hold on. Shoot, that, was, that is, I want, I'll get, that is incorrect. So if the, the improvements are owned by the county, not in so, it's not. So the business is required to do the upgrades, correct? No, incorrect. In your lease, it states otherwise. In the lease, you know, if if he goes in right and and puts in a building. Is part of the property. That building is part of Walking County's property. If he goes and puts a retaining wall in so we can put a, a container in for people to throw their garbage into, he can't take that retaining wall with him when he's gone. The but, retaining wall is different than the building, but in your lease, the, the buildings are the company's property that the county would then have to negotiate either the, the company has 30 days to pull them out of there or negotiations come to an agree agreeable price stated in your lease. Sure, they have like a, a portable office, it's theirs. Well, yes. what about the damage to the current structure there? Your your, lead, your, your company is supposed to keep the place in, in good working order. It, it's been left, since that uh, survey was done and people commented, many, many comments on the, on the trashiness of the, the transfer station, and, and since then, block walls have been damaged, mm -hmm. curbs taken out, fences mm -hmm. between the bins. Who enforces the, the clauses in the lease? Oh, he's got to maintain the property. And this, this is 
Yeah. You know, the second part of my question was, if we, if, if we get rid of that $700 yeah. and pay $50 a month like most of the yeah. other companies are paying, mm -hmm. will that lower the amount that is proposed on people's tax bills? Oh. That was my question. Yeah, thank you. Excellent question. Excellent, excellent, excellent question. So, so what happens is when the UTC right approves that rate, they look at all of the expenses that can do has. Okay? But they only regulate curbside services. They do not regulate the transfer station operation. Uh, right? So the direct answer to the question is that any dollar spent on a site improvement or a monthly lease rate is, does not get calculated into, uh, it's not included as an expense to raise a cost, a, a price to charge you. You don't pay for that. Right? And uh, David, I, I confirmed this with the UTC. David shakes that up and down. Uh, go ahead. Oh, sorry, you're next. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I, go ahead. Uh, quick question. Uh, so if you have a property that has mixed use residential and commercial, how will the minimum service level work for that? Oh, interesting question. So is this one tax parcel number that yeah. has on it? It's not just one tax parcel number. <coughs> on it. No, it's just one. And it has on it a septic system yeah. to start with. Yeah. And then it has on it uh, uh, residential and uh, business. So it has a house, a single family <coughs> house, a single family one, house. Yeah. And, it, and it also has a separate building that's a no, it's the same building. Same building. Yeah. And and, uh, and it has what else on it? Um, uh, just a retail business. A retail business. Oh, so uh, if it is, if it has, okay, so businesses aren't, nothing changes in these new recommendations, okay? okay. Um, but if you have a property, right, with a septic system and a house on it, then you would just be paying that one, 16 or 17 or 18 dollars per month for, for that minimum level of service, nothing else. So there's no minimum requirement for that business? No, nothing changes. Businesses, uh, nothing changes, right, uh, in these recommendations. Thank you. No. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm Craig Russman. We're, we're permanent residents here. We've lived here for possibly 13, 14 years. And we lived in Tawasson for three years prior to that, after moving from Colorado. And, and I really want to address the, this, this, this discussion of seasonality, people sitting here talking about whether or not it's right for seasonal residents to pay a fee. We, we live here we live here because we love this place, but we also love our the vicinity and our access to Vancouver and folks across the border and having a big city nearby and doing all that. And 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 I gotta tell you guys, I, I sit here and I listen to people talking and when I cross that border, you know, I'm a guest in that country. I, I answer questions <coughs> differently. I I, I I go across, I pay I pay sales tax when I go across when we live there. I paid my fees, I got my garbage service, my collection, my recycle, all of that. And then and then when I come back across here to the States, I I, I live here full time and I and I care about the hygiene of the community, I care about I care about the garbage. You guys are all sitting here talking about it. every one of you sitting here that's that's a that's a part time resident. These are second homes for you guys, right? So these are essentially a luxury. You, you, you own property and one of the certainly one of the most cost effective places to own a second home, maybe certainly on the coast. And it, on the continent, anywhere in the continent, you're sitting here talking about second homes that are, that are that are luxuries to where you're complaining about paying a few bucks a month to improve the community to make sure that that garbage collection is is, is picked up and there's not garbage everywhere. There there is absolutely no reason. You can't honest to God, people. I don't mean to to, to upset any of you. But like again, we live here because of the exchange we have between Canada and the U.S. If you can't afford. It, 20 bucks a month, or whatever it is, whatever the number is, to pay for garbage collection, honest to God, how do you have a second home? You inherited it. That's just it. This is something that needs to be done for the community. It needs to happen. Garbage needs to be picked up. All of us that live here have picked up trash in our yards on the beaches, and out of, out of empty lots as we're walking through. All of us have done it, we've all seen it, we all, we all understand the problem. It, it needs to be fixed, it's, it's a cheap issue, and again, <coughs> it's something for everybody. And, and representation about taxation. I, I spend thousands of dollars in Canada every year, thousands and thousands of dollars. Not as much as I spend in the States. 
I would I would I would I would I would I bet that's not true. It is. Anyway, we, we spent a lot of money there to pay the taxes, and I don't expect representation because I'm not a Canadian resident. I'm not a Canadian citizen. Okay? I mean I don't. So when you come here, the states, you get representation when you're when you're a citizen of the states. Not and that's why I've never come to these meetings, because it doesn't do any good as a Canadian. You know you don't do it. Okay, I'll I'll do thank you. So anyway, so that's that was, that was, that was, that was Thank you. What I would like to add, though, and I appreciate why you're saying that, is that in this community, you, you, uh, seasonals are represented by your advisory committee, the chair of which, who is a Canadian. But has so the no saying, final vote in taxation. Oh, well, they have quite authority and power. I'm sorry, I'm going to get a new hand here. Do you have a question? Or not? Yeah, a new person. Right sorry. Um, um, I'd like to talk about the uh, funds that you're raising for the garbage collection. There you have a budget every year of about four hundred thousand dollars, roughly, and the garbage pickup represents three hundred people paying for it, and that raises about fifty thousand dollars. So that's three hundred and fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars for the transfer station. Is that right? Uh, so roughly. So uh, that is well, it's incorrect and very general and very loose. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, just, so well, here, here's numbers. what happens. And so my question is, <laughs> if you were to charge everybody that's exempt, the 2,000 people that don't want and aren't using their garbage pickup right now, say $2 a month, that would raise enough money to, uh, that would be $50,000. You mean, you mean and that would increase the fee that is being collected now by 100%, it would double the amount of I, I, I hear what you're saying, thank you. So I guess the answer to that direct question, right. okay, is that charging a fee to people who are seasonal residents and providing them no service and allowing them to take their garbage illegally back across the border. Oh no, they can take it to the transfer station when it's open. Now that's another issue. Is oh, 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 I'm sorry, I misunderstood your proposal. I'm sorry, charge them a fee but make them use the transfer station? Sure. Yeah, because then they can take it in two times a week if they want, whereas the curbside service, that would be mandatory, would be once every two weeks. So if you're down, if I'm down here for two months, and I'm waiting for my garbage to be picked up once every two weeks, but I've got enough garbage that I take it to the transfer station twice a week. Right, so here's what we find, is that that's not what's been happening. Back in 2001, when they did not do the recommendation to eliminate exemptions, they tried the tag method. Uh, that failed. Uh, people were still taking it back across the border, reducing our economy of scale to provide other services. Uh, the other thing that people don't really think about in peak season is that the transfer station is not designed for high volumes of traffic, right? You get, um, and if you did improvements, you need a bigger piece of land and a lot of money for improvements. So it's really not feasible to not have curbside, to not have people taking it across the border, and then to just have everyone use the transfer station um, be, be, be backed up on Johnson Road all the way to Tahiti on a Sunday. I'm sorry, uh, you had your hand up a long time. But uh, 25 years I've been self-dumping, okay? I haven't thrown anything in a bush yet. And uh, most of us don't if we have a place, we save it until we got enough to take the transfer station. Right. I'm going to the transfer station now, you charge me five fifty. okay, charge me 10 bucks when I take a load there until he makes money. Or charge 15 cents or 25 cents a pound until he's making some money. I don't want to pay $200 a year for a service I'm not going to use, I'll probably end up self-dumping anyway. And you're not going to help clean up the people who are throwing their garbage in the ditches or on my yard or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's going to happen in, <coughs> so our, in our discussions and our professional opinion of that. Okay, number one, not have curbside collection service is going backwards. Uh, number two, to just have everybody use the transfer station would quadruple the costs, increase illegal dumping, increase <coughs> cross-border usage, um, and uh, just. Uh, create backups on Johnson Road. So that, thank you, that's our opinion of that. Go ahead. Okay, my opinion is 
25 years, I've never had trouble using the trash. Sometimes I have to wait 15 minutes, or sometimes I can't dump it on Saturday because I didn't have time after we go here to Spears State. But it's not going to stop the dream legal dumping of people putting the garbage on the beach. I don't take it across the border. So why bother to take it to the transfer station? But charge me enough to make it pay for something because I want the thing to be there. Besides, I like scrounging to it so that I can find one there. Hi, Arian. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay. First, thank you very much for your um, here. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Longtime resident here and a longtime resident of a property in Canada. So I do understand the perspective that the people here are, are bringing forward about being in another country. I made a decision to live in both countries. I'm a dual citizen. I can afford to do so. It was my choice. I decided to live in both countries, and I take the best of both and the challenges of both. With regards to the bigger question for me here, I just want to state that I'm unequivocally supportive of this initiative. We'll never make everybody happy. There's always been people that have this problem, that problem, understand it, respect it. The large issue for me is I want this environment cleaner, healthier, and safer. I spend a significant amount of time in Lake Park, um, volunteering there, and I great to these folks here that never apparently felt uh, illegal. Thank you. You are the exception. No, we're not. I see it as a daily. Police officers see it daily. They charge people with theft of service because we're dumping trash everywhere. I think it's an essential thing to do. We ought to make improvements to our community. This is a big way of doing it. I fully support mandatory property check Thank you. Thank you. Comment is I get once a month. I live here full time, and I have for a year. I get full time. Uh, I mean, I, I uh, get collection once a month, so I pay twelve dollars. I'm going to end up with twice a month, which I don't need. I'll pay seventeen dollars. I will happily, happily pay that money. No problem. I, I, it's for the greater good for everybody, and I'm happy to pitch in. So that's my comment. My question is, since there will be more money available, uh, I would expect an increase in service that, that, would, that I can see that I will benefit from. Mm -hmm. uh, one is recycling. I want to put my paper out for recycling. Mm -hmm. It rains here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Where I used to live, we had pans with lids uh -huh. that kept everything dry. I think that's a mm -hmm. great idea. The other thing is, occasionally, once a year, twice a year, we would have a, a bulk collection like you do across the board. Where you, put, you know, the stuff that ends right. up in an uh, unoccupied lot, a washing machine or a something, a piece of furniture, a sofa that's thrown out to the woods, yep. if there's some way for us to get the trash off the point and, and moved out of here so that there's some conduit. Right now it's like a like the Roach Motel, it comes in, it doesn't go out of the woods. <laughs> <laughs> So if you can address the additional service that we can expect. Yes. Uh, and I, I know that could yeah. just be an open question for discussion. Thank you. Uh, the additional service. Um, you know, that's actually exactly why we're wanting to do this. The additional service that most gets raised is the issue of waste organics, yard waste, yard waste and illegal dumping. And so the concept here is that with increased economy of scale, we can have higher levels of service with downward pressure and prices. Programs like those things do take funding, okay? And, and, and so you can't be, you know, worried about going out of business, you're one blown truck engine away from insolvency, but meanwhile you're going to put together a yard waste program and have a chipper and let everybody bring stuff cheap and, and we'll compost and, and give it back to you for your soil program. Yard waste would be wonderful. I'll just a yeah. can where we can put our our thank you. you know the twigs that we pick up, put it in the can, put it out there. And further develop that. Oh yeah, um, yeah, that would be wonderful. Let me let me thank you and comment on your, the recyclable situation. Yeah. Um, you know, I know that in a lot of other places they have commingled recyclables containers with yes. the lid that you don't get water on it. 
Um, in Whatcom County, we have source-separated recyclables system. So you'll have three bins for your different materials. And I put my one with the paper on it underneath the one with all the cans and glass so the rain doesn't get on it. It still gets wet. Okay. But what's good about that, if, any, as an aside, if anyone has heard about what's going on in China, okay, they're cutting off the U.S. market. They're going to quit taking all of our recyclables to make stuff or a lot of the important recyclables and places that are... So what's happening here, the places that have the higher quality recyclables, meaning no contamination, are going to still be able to have the better markets for the lower costs to ship out their recyclables. The places that have commingled rely on uh, conveyors of people pulling out contamination, right? And they can't pull it out like we source separated. Uh, so, um, sorry, I keep, I haven't looked over here. Hi, hi guys. <laughs> um, so we have a better product for market because we do the source separated. I'm sorry. Uh, thank you. Okay. I just wanted to make a comment as far as I think that, I can't speak for all the comedians, but I see for myself, I don't actually think that there's a problem with us paying for the service. But as far as when we're talking about proportional representation, if 75% of the point is seasonal, where is the accountability to, um, if we're going to pay for the services, so we're adding the $20 on a month, that's mm -hmm. fine. I think that the community needs to be cleaned up. That's a service that needs to be paid for. That's a progress. Mm -hmm. But if 75% of the people are uh, seasonal, then why can is there going to be any accountability to them to change it to accommodate the 75% uh, revenue base? So say <coughs> uh, on a Sunday instead of, we use the tag system now, but tags are Monday, aren't they? And it's always an issue for us because we're always arguing over who has to stay down on Monday to get the, get yeah. the bin out, sure. put the bin back and whatnot. So 75% of the revenue is coming from uh, people that are usually weekend users. I don't understand quite how with a private company... Only uh, the best utility. Where's the accountability for the can-do company to the community? Like, I, I guess I'm a little at a loss. It seems like a private company, but almost like oh, sure. publicly collected. Oh, thank you. Uh, two parts of that answer, if not three. Uh, number one, you are represented on your Point Roberts Community Advisory Committee. Okay, you can come to those meetings. You can look at the meeting minutes. They take the trouble to put those meetings on YouTube. So it's in the All Point Bulletin. <laughs> um, the chair of the committee is Canadian. So you can engage with that representation or not, it's your choice, okay? I will say that in the last two years, in that process, you know, they asked us to look at the Canadian system and see how we can apply it here, okay? So um, there was a lot of diligence, right, in making sure you guys were accommodated. And, you know, that's why, you know, extra services like driving and carry out, right? And on the website, we want a good website with lots more information than we have. And we want you to know how to get a cheap raccoon-proof garbage can, yes. right? So you won't have to wait until Monday because of the garbage for a buck. They'll come up to your house and get it, and the raccoons can't we, get it. We just like, we lock everything away. So I just want to know if seventy-five percent, like, where's the proportional representation? If we're going to pay for it, oh. and seventy-five percent of that revenue is coming from oh. seasonal, are they going to adjust? The services to represent that 75 percent of the customers oh. are now people that want specific pickup. Oh, thank you. Okay, the other half of the question then is that, uh, you know, there's no legal mechanism for this kind of proportional representation for out of county and seasonal residents. Yeah, um, but I mean, that's where I just wondered, like, well, where's the accountability? The accountability, though, thank you. But what I want to say is that the accountability, is, you know, when you're looking at it, it's when the UTC approves the tariff, they have to look at the demographics, and they have to look at the seasonality, and the percent of seasonality, and the um, and estimate how much garbage they're going to get based on whether they want it permanent, okay? Um, so should we be writing letters to the UTC then saying, you know, as you're going through this, uh, this is what we would like to see? The UTC, thank you, the UTC is the regulatory authority where you would, if you had a complaint, you would go to them, not me, about your curbside. If you had a comment, you would go to them, not me. If you want to see their financial records, you go to them, not me. Okay? 
and I'll finish with that and get in the end. Um, the, um, the final thing I'll say about that, though, is that the county council, Washington County Council, is the governing body of the disposal district for the county. Okay, and you know, uh, you don't have to be a citizen to, to, in the public hearing to provide comment to them. Okay, it, so it's not proportional. It's more like whoever engages. Not so much. No, actually, reasonable and yeah. nice works best. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> We're part of what if Point Roberts is part of Washington County. Yes. And Washington County is also part of the mainland. Uh, yes. And that portion of Washington County on the mainland, USA, has a company that does garbage service and recycling service. Uh -huh. Why are we a separate like area? Why don't why don't we why aren't we included in their, in their service areas? Like the costs to operate this limited service area are borne by everyone in Washington County. Why do we have to be singled out and sort of in a way penalized because we're you know separate from the mainland? The company is operating there, so this is their service area, they'd be responsible as part of all the overall costs. Okay. Sure. The whole, sure. so that would question. keep costs down lower, would it not? So um so the utilities and transportation company is the one that defines territories and approves service in those territories. In Whatcom County, we have three haul service providers, okay? And, and, and you have the cities and the unincorporated area in the county. For example, in Bellingham, curbside collection services are mandatory. The city of Bellingham uses SSC, and they have a contract so, they, so the UTC doesn't regulate SSC in the city of Bellingham. Outside the city of Bellingham, <coughs> SSC is regulated by UTC, and UTC is the one that defines their territory. UTC defines the territory for Nooksack Valley Disposal and up in Point Roberts. Back in 2010, when the last guy went out of business and they awarded the new franchise to Can Do, um, you did not see SSC or Nooksack Valley Disposal apply for this territory. You know why? Because it's not profitable under the existing scenario. And when I say profitable, that means even under the circumstance where the UTC guarantees them a fixed rate of return, they saw it as not worth the money, a headache, and as a commissioner, the UTC said not viable, right? They weren't even interested with the answer to your question. Mm. We're a privatized system, and that's how it works. No one applied for the business up here, except for Can Do, who hasn't raised their prices in eight years. Uh, the first, uh, <laughs> so continue what he said. Have you considered a voucher, say, like I live in Surrey, I get three large pickup items a year, I go and pick it up, rather than say twice a year, you have a good idea, but I think twice a year, oh darn, I missed it. What am I going to do with, with grandma's fridge for six months until they pick it up free again? But if I got a voucher and I use it at my convenience, that they come pick up my large item, then it's just to stop these people that dump their stuff at the side of the road, their gym washers, or coaches, and stuff, hoping somebody picks it up. Yeah. So um, I think we're paying this extra money, and I was hoping with this money that I'm paying, that it cleans up the side of the road, not only pieces of garbage, but all the other junk that people was dropping. So, thank you. So what happens here is that, you know, wherever you go, no matter how much people are working to have a good solid waste system, you still have illegal dumping and littering. We also go investigate sites and we do enforcement and we find people for illegal dumping, but a lot of times you can't find out who it is, right? So if someone drops a couch or a refrigerator on the side of the road, in the road right away, right now, you can call up the Public Works Department and they will go get it. Okay. If it's you know if it's not in the road right away, if it's up in the woods, we'll go investigate. We'll see if we can figure out who we'll get it. We'll talk to the property owner. You know we have you know we'll, we'll we'll try and do something to clean it up. Okay. So you kind of have that thing wherever you go. Um, when you say voucher, it kind of makes me think of the tag system, which is different than like for couches and refrigerators. No, just large pickup. You, you get a. Do you have any large pickup? Services, and that's not normally a part of the tariff, is it really? That would be a side business. Yeah, well, it, it is available under the tariff. There are rates for for special pickup, special service. Oh, do you have that? They're oh, the tariff, yeah. So, so they, they are available. So if someone has a couch, 
And guess why you don't know about that? Because there's not a good website that provides information about that. And guess why? Because website, those things all cost money. And we're going to have that. If this, we're going to have a website that describes all those services. Dave is already planning on that. It just flies. Ken. The, the Canadian uh, system that you keep referring to has government oversight with that tax money fee on the taxes. Uh, here, it sounds like the county is going to be handling the billing for the first portion of people's garden service, handing it over to the service provider. What oversight is there on making sure that that money is handled properly? Oh, thank you very much. So as you might fair question. As you might expect, the Whatcom County Treasurer's Office, who collects and processes all the property taxes and has quite a good capacity and capability for that, is the entity that will collect that fee on the tax bill, okay? That's audited, I mean, that's without question, actually. That doesn't... And then the money, and then that money that is collected, right, that then is forwarded to the service provider for their service, right, will be exactly described in a, a contract between the county and can do that's made attachment to the tariff that's overseen by the UTC. The, the big problem I have to think about around that, the treasurer's office is fine with that mechanism, but what I have a concern with is I have a small businessman who I think is going to have to front all of those expenses for four or five months before he gets paid. He's going to have to borrow money and pay interest on that um, and, if you, and if one engine on a truck blows, does he get up to speed? So why not just remove the exemption and keep it business as usual? He, now he has the bigger customer base. Keep the, mm -hmm. the uh, minimum in his tariff is a 20-gallon mini can and recycling. So that equates to about $9 a month, just over $100 oh. a year. Everybody gets to sign up, especially the seasonals. They wouldn't be taxed as bad, feed as bad. They could understand a smaller fee. Myself, my family generates one can. Why should we have to pay for two? It is only going to discourage recycling for the people that don't generate as much garbage. So why not just remove the exemption and then he does account five months where he's not waiting for the tax money. Okay, so now you're talking about yeah. So that's uh, so all of a sudden we went from talking about how the money is collected at the treasurer's office and we went into the minimum, why the minimum level of service of twice monthly collection of a 32 gallon can no, with three Why not just remove the exemption? We don't need to debate the oh, that's level of service, doing. but why not? If the level was service was removed, then the, the company doesn't have to come up with money for five months worth of. Well, thank you. That exactly is what we're doing. We're removing the opportunity. But you're also taxing. Feed us on our taxes. Are you, you're asking three man, do you have a question? <laughs> <laughs> you had your hand up? Yeah, I did. Uh, what does the tax payer that's been on garbage full time since it can be started, what are they gaining from this? You mean, okay, so you're saying the person who's, all, who's already signed up for curbside collection services? Very good question. What you are gaining, okay, you are one of the 300 curbside collection customers, right, right now, that is uh, paying a fee based on UTC's estimate of 800 customers. When, when the UTC set the current tariff rate of $17, it was based on having 800 customers, okay? We only have 300, okay? So what's going to happen is when the UTC recalculates the cost of service, Right? You're going to have a higher economy of scale, so your price theoretically should go down somewhat. That's how you benefit from this over what you are right now. There's more people paying for this. It's like there's more people buying the product, so the product is cheaper. Because you have more customers to spread out the cost over. Hey, Jeff, Jeff, let me just tell you for senior just for a minute. So we're at, we are at the bottom of the hour. I think if it's okay with you, I don't know how you're feeling, but want to go a little bit longer? I mean, let's go ahead and take another 10 and try and get these hands accommodated. Uh, hands. Thank you. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, let's give these guys a shot. I'm sorry.
Speak up. Speak up. What is your argument in our position if you have a fully serviced lot with an empty house? No rentals, no no nobody's living there. But they still get charged. So you, you have a septic system and a house. If you, have, if you have a property with a septic system and a house, you you will be paying sixteen or seventeen or eighteen dollars a month for garbage service. That's correct. And and the reason for that is that at all these meetings we had, you know, it was acknowledged that even if you're not living there, you may be renting it, or even if you're not living there, you may be coming down half the year. It, it was just cut, they cut the pie, and we agree with that. <coughs> Sorry, go ahead. Is there a uh, time limit uh, for the uh, on-site inspection? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
for the service provider, they can't be you know, hiring a bunch of people and using a bunch of trucks half the year and then laying everybody off and not using their trucks the other half of the year. So thank you. Uh, this was discussed. I appreciate the feedback. Now. Uh, and I'm just going to buy your office. And it says right on here, it's 300. That's the case right now. 300 is going to go to, um, oh. actually, 300 people voted to have this done, and 2,000 voted not to have it done. Oh, no, that's not true. Well, that's what it looks That's exactly Oh, yeah. Uh, there, was, there was no vote. There was a survey where okay, 300 people completed the survey. Um, uh, new question. New person. Uh, just so you know, I'm also from Canada. I have the same problem. We went to the same town meeting where I live about the garbage. And at that time, I didn't even go to the town meeting to talk about it. But for the last five years, I paid for garbage pickup that we, we don't use. And not only do we not pay for it, I got to drive 20 miles to go drop my garbage off. And there's no problem with that. I got two properties there. I got properties here. And if so, if I can pay $20 a month, which is cheaper than in Canada, if I can pay that amount for the properties, whether I'm in them or not, I think that's a great deal. Especially to be able, I got that option. Or when I'm here, I can, if I don't get the garbage picked up, I can go to transfer states and drop it off. I don't see really what the problem is. Being in, Thank you. Again, we've had many, many of these meetings. I'm glad to see that you guys have finally come because we have had a lot of these meetings. Thank you. Thank you. I'll just, I'll just piggyback on that. Oh. This is John and Jeff's ninth time up here. Oh, that? <laughs> I'm a part time resident. I live, uh, we live on a uh, private road. Uh, not, e not even the sheriff uh, polices it unless we call them or if there's an incident. Uh, how how would that work? Uh, would I be able to get service or am I exempt? Uh, uh, again, oh, it's you. a private road. Okay, so um, is there a long, winding, difficult no, road going to the driveway? It's about one block from off APA to the bottom. We have a long driveway. Sorry, it's not a driveway, it's a road. Okay. And we live on either side of the road. Okay. And it's private. I mean, again, how does that work in terms of either getting service sure. or being exempt from service? So my understanding in the tariff and the services is that um, you know uh, we don't different. I don't. Hey, David, I don't believe we differentiate between private, public road. So David will be going up that road to your house. Would we not have to have everyone on the on that road approve? The, you know, the, the service. Well, you're saying does the service provider have legal access to come up your road? Well, that's one of my questions. Good question. David, do you have an answer to that? Uh, it depends on the agreement you guys have on the road. You know, if you guys, like, if you wanted, here's my answer to that. If you, that, that's a good question. Legally, can you prevent someone like EMS or fire or police from coming up your private road or a garbage Apparently, service provider? Apparently, we can in terms of the police. I mean, they, they won't come down unless we call them. Now, here's the answer to that question. I would ask the UTC if owner, if investor-owned utilities have the legal right to enter a private road to collect garbage. Their attorneys will know the answer to that question. But if, okay, just let me, if, if yes. we, we couldn't allow that, uh, does that make us exempt from the, from the cause? No. 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 Because that's your choice. That's question. If, that, if you choose to not allow them to come up and get your garbage can? Well, yeah, I get it. That's your choice. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, just a couple of things. Uh, I'm Canadian. Uh, I've spent my whole, I, I live in Canada. I have a recreational place here. My mom's dad built the cabin down here nine years ago. So our family's been here for a long time and it's a beautiful place. I have no problem spending the extra money. I think that's, it's a welcome addition. You had mentioned earlier that there was two things about private road. One was carry out versus driving. Mm -hmm. And you said if it was up to 25 feet, it would be a dollar extra. And then 125 to 250 would be a drive in, and there would be an extra charge on top of it. Uh, I think you said that right. Okay. So, firstly, will you be providing that 32 gallon pail for everybody? Or will we be getting one? That would be your, your can. Okay, so we have to purchase it. Yes, okay, and you so can purchase a regular. If there's any recycling breakdown, will you provide any any uh, mm. 
Bims. The Bims. So the Bims are in negotiation right now between David and UTC, and I've talked about it, can do, right? So, you know, like for example, where I'm at, Sanitary Services in Bellingham and the unincorporated areas, right? You know, basically, I own those. I mean, I have, I have, I think I put a deposit down, but if someone steals them, I have to pay for them. Okay, so it'd be some type of arrangement like that. Okay. Um, it may be a deposit system. You may have to purchase them for twenty-five bucks, and then they're yours okay. in perpetuity. And just one last comment was following up on her comment about the seventy-five percent being seasonally-based uh, people here. So from October to April, 75% of Canadians are basically not here. If there's 25% of the users using the facilities, how would we still have the same capacity of crew picking it up when they're, they're doing one quarter of the volume? They're still going to drive by your house. And, 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 if, there, and if there's a garbage can, they're going to pick it up. And if there's not, they're not. Right. Right. Okay. Oh, okay. Hey, guys. We're 10 minutes past the order to stop, so if it's okay with you, that'll wrap up today. So a couple of things. The video uh, recording that we did will be posted on YouTube, and I'll put in the point interface uh, early next week the link to get to that. It's actually we put it on the county department's uh, uh, community advisory committee website. And, uh, I want to thank John and Jeff once again. Oh. One last thing I want to mention. The Point Roberts Community Advisory Committee has a standing item on the agenda every month, right? We meet monthly regarding this issue. We meet the second Tuesday of every month. So you're all welcome to come to those meetings. Right? And we have it up at 6 o'clock here in the community center, and it's posted, we, we posted on the um, electronic uh, All Points Bulletin, the paper All Points Bulletin, we put a sign up on the Valero Station Community Board, and I put the, the notice and point interface as well. So, come to the meeting. Sweet.